The Abbott Lab really brings NIAR to the future. And what the Abbott Lab does is it everything that we do in our real world lets us do in a virtual world. Right now we're probably one of the, the only place in, in, in aerospace where you have on that single building the capability to conduct virtual as well as uh, physical testing in the same space. It allows us to save cost, save time, and really advance new research to the market faster. The labs are initially focused on structural dynamics and crashworthiness. We are experts in two fields, testing and numerical analysis. Now the foundation for a successful full-scale numerical analysis lies in accurate definition of the material models. And at AVET, we have a dedicated team for specifically for the materials research and development, and that's what we do here. So you can see the, the level of uh, details that we have in the ATDs and in the seed to predict failures and help them in the certification process. Um, we're also looking at what kind of injury patterns may be typical for aircraft crashes that currently we may not fully understand. So the virtual flight testing lab is a, a virtual environment uh, where we can simulate uh, all the different aircraft systems and how they behave uh, in the real world. Uh, we have uh, mathematical models that are able to capture uh, the aerodynamics behavior and we can estimate all the forces and the influence that they have on the structure and the flying physics uh, of the airplane. And then we have coupled this uh, physics-based uh, library with uh, flight simulator tool in order to be able to interact uh, real time and to be able to have a virtual flight by, by a pilot on the, on the simulator and evaluate how that new system or uh, how that new aircraft uh, is going to behave uh, during flight without the need of having to build a full-scale uh, prototype of the, uh, of the vehicle. So a few years ago we were approached by the FAA. They were uh, trying to integrate small drones into the U.S. airspace. And one of the questions that they had is, you know, how severe it is an impact between a drone and an aircraft. These are an example of uh, some of the UAVs or drones that we tested with. Um, we both did physical testing and uh, transitioned in, into simulation work. For example, is we can look at what happens if we shoot the drone and we are trying to impact a, an aircraft, a windshield. So we like to look at the complete drone on a real test and then we try to validate the simulation. As we can see, they behave similarly. That comes with a lot of more work. We look at loads, we look at strains. So that's the real value of, that we bring in, in, in this lab, is just to be able to avoid all that full-scale testing, to have good predictable models that we can have confidence because we do a lot of testing in the building block uh, testing lab at the coupon uh, component level. And then that way we can uh, provide to our clients uh, data in a short period of time without the need of having to wait uh, multiple months or years in order to be able to have the proper funding or the proper test articles to be able to run these very large test programs. So the, the objective of the building block testing lab is for us to be able uh, to have testing capabilities that we can use to uh, characterize materials and components uh, that we use uh, for our uh, simulations. So this is the building block approach and it has that it gets the name from the building block approach methodology that a lot of the engineering fields use today, particularly the aerospace industry. So how that works is that you have your problem and you divide it into a pyramid, where basically you have usually five levels. You have the coupons, elements, details, subcomponent, and the component, which is whatever you are trying to study, certify, design, manufacture. So usually you start at the bottom with the coupon level testing and you move up with the complexity and you're putting all the effort on that basic level to try to understand exactly what is happening. And then by conducting this uh, coupon and component level tests, we can avoid having to run full-scale tests in order to have good predictable models. So one of the reasons that we built this lab, one was to support that, uh, uh, those uh, numerical model analysis, and another one is to have a place where we can do very short turnaround, quick projects for the FAA or for industry and also one of a kind, things that you don't do every day that require a, an engineer to think about how are you going to do the test. The 35, this is the preparation or conditioning room basically where we are preparing the specimens for the disinfectant effect project that we're doing for the FA in relation with the COVID. They want to understand the effect that disinfectants have on the strength and flammability of cabin materials. 
So basically the material that you have on your seats or that you have on the inside of the airplane, what happens after you wipe them a thousand times with a chloro solution or something like that. Obviously, we're not using chloro, we're using the products that the aerospace industry is using to clean the aircraft, but they want to understand, is it gonna affect the strength of my material? Is it gonna change the flammability characteristics of my material? This is the Crash Dynamics Laboratory where we primarily do testing for aerospace seats. We use this in aerospace testing almost daily. We can test anything from aerospace seats to uh, automotive testing to child car seats. There are load cells inside of his ribs for side impact testing. Uh, it's a lot bigger capacity than our older system, so we can go up to a lot higher accelerations, uh, up to 90 Gs. It also gives us a lot more control over the acceleration and matching different profiles for those tests. So we have uh, an in-house uh, dummy calibration lab so every one of our tests here in the lab deals with a crash dummy. We have to have calibrated, certified crash dummies for any tests that we conduct. You could have an entire dummy getting tested in one test, like a hit to the thorax on a fully assembled crash dummy, or you could have something as small as just the head getting tested individually. After we're finished with the dynamic tests, we have a specialized software that we use to analyze and report the data back to the clients. Uh, it works in conjunction with a pre-test checklist that we fill out that we can then feed into, uh, to, into our program. So we're able to provide a final test report back to the client uh, in about five to 10 minutes after the dynamic test is ran. I think one of the unique things that Wichita State brings is its integration of students and our focus towards applied learning. And the beauty about this group and why I really like them is because they cannot just run the physical testing, the experimental side, but also the computational side. And what this does is allows the students to get firsthand uh, knowledge of things they don't learn in a textbook and makes them very adaptable to the workforce once they walk across the stage and graduate. And that is something that I really consider to be unique. Most of us either specialize on one side or the other. And I think these guys help everybody bring everything together that we do on this uh, advanced virtual engineering and testing laboratory. One of the key things that I think Senator Moran has done in his tenure uh, as being a senator on defense appropriations is, is really be the connector between the Department of Defense and, and higher level people like uh, the Secretary of the Army, the Secretary of the Air Force, and from the commercial side, the NASA Administrator, bringing them to Kansas, showing them what we have to offer, and, and really then he, he steps back and, and lets Kansas sell itself. And so I think that's the, one of the most unique attributes of Senator Moran is Kansas sells itself. He, he's just the dot connector. And, and then from that point on of how Kansas can and, and Wichita State and NIAR can really benefit the uh, United States and Department of Defense and, and other federal agencies.